The first type of woman of the five is represented by posh Victoria Spice. Uh, she's the kind of woman who's sophisticated. She's a lady. Not the kind of woman you could take to Pizza Hut, mate. No. She's classy, you know. You'd have to take it to Pizza Express, you know. You can't say that. that. It's 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 not. It's not. You can't Only say one that. in five women are like that, Stu. Not one in two, like you and Jim Davidson. I don't think I'm sexist. I'm not sexist. The second type of woman is represented by Scary, Mel B. She represents the kind of woman who is obsessed with sex. Sex, sex, sex. That's all she thinks about. She wants it, Stu. She's a whore. She's a Jezebel. She's a harlot, Stu. She's a bed bucket. Bed bucket. Yes, Stu. What she is. She wants it. It's not sex. It's only one in five women are like that, Stu. Not one in two, like you and Jeffrey Boycott think. I don't you know. Know. <laughs> The third type of woman is represented by Ginger Jerry. Ginger right? Jerry. She's the one with the red hair. Though, uh, if you've seen the photos of her on the internet doing that kung fu kick, you'll know she's not a natural redhead. <laughs> uh, she's the type of woman, she's a leader, Stu. She's powerful. She's manipulative, you know. She manipulates men to do what she wants. Can't you know the type, that. mate. Yeah. She's like Margaret Thatcher, but with a nicer arse. You can't so say that. Stu. You can't say that. The fourth type of woman is represented by baby Emma, right? She represents the one in five women who are blonde and nothing else. You can't say that. <laughs> Sex. One in five of them, actually. Not one in two, like you and Skeletor. I don't one in five. The final type you. of woman, no, it's true, the final type of woman is represented by sporty Melanie Chisholm. Yeah. Chisholm. Chisholm, Chisholm. 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 She represents <laughs> the final 20% of women. The final 20% of women, which is ugly women, <laughs> Who can jump? You can't say that. What do you mean? No, it's got an ugly face, Stu, but boy, what's your leap? It's incredible. Look, it's like a Zebedee so or something. What, look at that. Are you saying, are you saying that nature has given her the jumping ability as some kind of compensation for the ugliness? Is that it? Stu, I think that's too simplistic an explanation, nice, the nature yeah. argument. That's what a lamb would think. No, I think it's nurture. I think mm. Melanie Chisholm, 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 Stu, Chisholm. Chisholm, has been nurtured by society to jump. Mm. I think Melanie Chisholm was born, right? She looked in the mirror. What, in the hospital? Yeah. As a baby? Yeah. yeah. She thought, oh, oh dear, I'm a bit ugly. <laughs> Better learn a skill. Oh, jumping <laughs> here. Like yeah, man, love a jumping woman, Stu. And you think about it, jumping is the only way that an ugly woman can procreate, Stu. Right? Imagine the scene. Imagine the scene. You're sitting in your house, mind your own business, right? Melanie Chisholm. 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 Yeah, right. Chisholm. You could have leapt in through your window, done a cartwheel across the floor, done a backflip up onto your lap, Collected your gametes. Chisholm, no. <laughs> gametes is more polite, Stu. Right. In her ovaries. And be out the window before you've had a chance to look at her. Just as she's disappearing down the street, you'd Sorry. go, hold on, um, she's a bit ugly. Yeah. It's too late, Stu, she's got your gametes. Yeah, uh, the ugly women lie. We'll every continue. week. Um, every week we're going to be showing a sort of fly on the jump. wall style documentary. I, I can feel um, this week, This week, a look behind the scenes at some of the outrageous yeah. journalists on Britain's yeah. most controversial arts magazine. The ironic review. This is the control center of the ironic review. It's the magazine for people with a brain. We like to use it to think up different things to what other people would think. Yeah, and what other people would think they would think. This is Tony Elms, my second in command. Ex-husband and sexual pygmy. <laughs> this is Simon Jarvik, probably our most controversial contributor. No, he isn't. And how about this one, Sasha? It's about why eating at McDonald's is a good thing, not bad like you thought. Ah, yeah. great stuff. You oh. thought that ages ago, Simon. You did not. Say, oh, dear, I thought that before you came to work here. This is Tim Stone, our new blood. And this is Gary Putner, our working class contributor. A refreshingly different voice. You're having a laugh, ain't you? <laughs> this is Vera Hannon, our knitting columnist. Ah, you didn't expect us to have an old woman writing for us, did you? But we do. And it's about knitting. That's passe. That won't work. Very boring. Sure. I've, uh, I've had an idea for the cover. Ah, upside down, I like it. Ah. No, the, no. That'll confound the readers. And the news agents. Yeah. <laughs> nice work, Tim. <laughs> Tim is the one member of the Ironic Review staff I wouldn't mind getting horizontal with, if you know what I mean. I mean, I'd like to have sex with him. <laughs> anyway, then we got married, but it didn't work. We were divorced within a few... Days. Yeah. 
Tony felt that having a wife his own age meant he couldn't keep in touch with what young people really feel. And of course I had my awakening, which you no doubt read about in the tabloids. No. Oh, aren't you? Oh, well, I am a lesbian. Are you? Yeah, I am a lesbian. You're not. <laughs> You're not a lesbian. I am a lesbian. You said you tried it once and it made you sick. What do you know about it? The Romans obviously crucified the uh, Jesus Christ, ironically, because they were laughing. The weekly ideas meeting is when the shtick really hits what the fan. What is the point of discussing the contents of the magazine when the whole title of the magazine is wrong? It's been called the Ironic Review for over 50 issues now. We built a following up, Simon. Which is exactly why we should change the name, keep our readers on their toes. Yeah. We should call it Cat Week. You're having a laugh, ain't you? Oh, we can't change the title now anyway, Simon. I've already done the cover. The whole reason we called the magazine the Ironic Review is because it takes a sideways glance at society and no one really knows what we actually yeah. think. Or, or what we think we think. So. Yeah. Or what they think we think yeah, we thank think. You. Calling it the Ironic Review isn't ironic, is it? it is. Call it the not ironic review. That would be an irony. No. It's a double no. irony. No. No, no, because calling it the Ironic Review is actually a triple irony. Oh. And so on until infinity. Yeah. Can't you see? Stop right. shouting. Stop. Hey. Stop. And how did you feel when Sasha left you for a woman? Well, you know, I think that's actually testament to me. I mean, uh, after a woman's made love to me, she knows no man will ever satisfy her again. So. But in her book, Everyone Else is Wrong, she says, making love to Tony was like being crawled over by a slug with the flu. Yeah. She's been ironic. And that is why the films of Derek Jarman are deeply homophobic. Ah, oh. no. oh, the ironic review nouveau, eh, hey, Derry ah. Oh, no. They've printed the cover the wrong way up. Hey. Oh, mine's OK. No, that's the whole point. It's supposed to be upside down. This isn't ironic at all. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realise. I thought it was a mistake. No, I put it the right way up when I took it down to printers. You bloody idiot. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, our school and news agents put it in the magazine racks upside down. Uh, oh, wait, 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 you're not thinking. Maybe this way up is the most ironic of all. <laughs> oh.